very good morning to you, beloved. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, the greeting is recorded in John 1, verses 43 to 44. It reads as follows. The next day, Jesus decided to leave Galilee, finding Philip. He said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now the tradition says that the disciple Philip preached in Phrygia and he died as a martyr at Hierapolis. Philip came from a town called Bethsaida, the town from which Peter and Andrew came. John 1 verse 44. The likelihood is that he too was a fisherman. Although the first three Gospels record his name, Matthew 10 3, Mark 3 18, Luke 6 14 and Acts 1 13, it is in the Gospel of John that Philip becomes a living personality. Scholars disagree on Philip. In Acts 6 verse 5, we have Philip as one of the seven ordained deacons. Some say this is a different Philip. Some believe this is the apostle. If this is the same Philip, then this personality came more to life because he had a successful campaign in Samaria. He also was the one who led the Ethiopian eunuch to Christ in Acts 8 verse 26. He also stayed with Paul in Caesarea, Acts 21 verse 8. And was one of the major figures in the missionary enterprise of the early church. The Gospel of John shows Philip is one of the first to whom Jesus addressed his favorite words, follow me. And Philip did so unconditionally, without conditions and without opposition. When Philip met Christ, he immediately found Nathaniel and told him that we have found him of whom Moses and the prophets wrote about. Nathaniel was skeptical, but Philip did not argue with him. He simply answered, Come and see. Now, come and see. I don't know if you recall, some time ago I spoke to the standard of Carl Sagan. And this is the following. Extraordinary events require extraordinary evidence. And here Flip is inviting Nathaniel and say, come and see. The story tells us two important things about him. Firstly, it shows his right approach to the skeptic and his simple faith in Christ. That he had faith in Christ, number one. Number two, it shows that he had a missionary instinct. He left no stone unturned but went out and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ across the world. Philip was a man with a warm heart and pessimistic head. He was one who would very much like to do something for others, was a people's person, but who did not see how it could be done. Yet the simple Galadian gave all he had. In return, God used him. We hold back. So many times we hold back as we are reluctant to respond to God's cry and his call. And by choice, we hold back. We don't give it all. Flip gave it all. Everything he had in response 
to his calling. It is said that he died by hanging. He died because of what he believed in spreading the good news. While he was dying, he had requested that his body should not be wrapped in linen as Jesus Christ's body had been wrapped. He wanted something different because he deemed him not self worthy to be buried in the same way as the Lord Jesus Christ. And he requested that his body be wrapped in papyrus, where it was not worthy to follow the same route as Christ. The symbol of Philip is the basket because he was part in the feeding of the 5,000. It is he that stressed the cross as a sign of Christianity and victory. Christ, when he died on the cross, before he was crucified, the cross symbolized oppression, might, power, and drove fear into the lives of people. When Christ died on the cross, how he changed it. I always say, but is a, a contradictory conjunction in the English language, but not when Jesus uses it. When Jesus uses it, it changes the life of people. As Philip also suggests, and stress the cross as a sign of Christianity and victory, and today we wear that cross, we display it proudly because we believe in what we believe in. Now, let's be like Philip. Let's continue to see God's face in Christ and follow him unconditionally as we also seek to bring others to God for the special treatment and healing and all the benefits that God is bestowing upon us through the grace of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Be like Philip and see God's face and bring other people to God as well. Let I say in Jesus' name, the one who died for our sins now to all eternity. Amen. Savior, I come, quiet my soul. Redemption's here Where your blood was spilled For my ransom Everything I once held dear I count it all as lost Lead me to the cross Where your love poured out Jesus, we come to you this morning knowing that you are the Son of God and the King of Israel, the one on whom we can trust, Lord Jesus. This morning we put our trust in you to give us hope for the situation in which we find ourselves, Lord Jesus to give hope to those who are struggling to put food on the table, Lord Jesus, struggling to pay their bills, Lord Jesus, and who are worried about the future. Lord, we call on you to intervene and to make a way, Lord, for many who are suffering during this pandemic. We thank you for 
people who've been generous people who've generously given to our pantry and to those in need lord bless them encourage them to give more we pray for our healthcare workers lord and we thank you that they are sacrificing their their time and using their talents that you've given them keep them safe We pray for our minister and we thank you for how he's been messaging to us over this time. Keep us close to you during this time, Lord Jesus. Open our hearts, open our minds to receive you. We ask all of this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.